The next the, uh, question we now come to is that clauses one and two stand part. Stuart Nash. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this, you know, the, we're, we're talking about the time of the commencement. The commencement date, I think, will come as a great relief to a whole lot of people who put submissions into this from 2008 onwards. This Act comes into force on the day after the date in which it receives royal assent. Mr Chair, the thing that greatly concerns me about that, not the clause itself, is this has been on the order paper since 2008, and I'm not too sure when we're actually going to get to the third reading stage. So hopefully it'll be in this term of Parliament because some people, because some people have been waiting, as we have heard, for 112 years for this to happen. The, the, the Port Chalmers Bowling Club have been waiting since 1977 for this to happen. There are developments that have come and gone waiting for this to happen. Um, so let's hope, Mr Chair, that the date that this comes into force is in fact 2015, not 2016, because if it's 2017, it'll be the, a, a Labour Minister who'll be giving the, uh, the third reading speech. It could be anyone. All we know is that by the time, if it is 2017, then, the, then there will be, there's been the Minister Richard Worth, there's been Maurice Williamson, there's been Louise Upston. In fact, this was introduced by David Parker. So already we're on our fourth Minister of Land Information. We could conceivably, quite conceivably, due to the snail's pace of the passage of this bill, be up to our fifth and potentially even sixth, because if it's 2017 that gets his third reading speech, then it could well be Minister Chris Finlayson who's giving the, uh, the third reading speech. But, but <laughs> Chris, Barfoy, Chris Barfoy giving the speech early. If it's early 2017, it'll be Chris Finlayson. If it's, if it's after the election in 2017, it'll be Chris Barfoy, the Honourable Chris Barfoy giving the speech. But who knows where this could end up? It could be 2020 and it could be the Honourable... I don't know, Penny Hanare giving this speech. It could be anyone or Calvin Davis. It'll, it'll be a long time. The other thing, Mr. Mr. Sounding a bit Chief. repetitive, I'd ask the member to um, find something a little bit new to say. Oh, new to say, OK. Um, well, the title, the, now the, <laughs> the interesting thing, Mr. Chair, is the title of this bill is actually, um, what's it called? The Reserves and Other Lands Disposal Act 2008. Now, <laughs> maybe we could actually call it the Lands and Other Disposals Act 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012. Who knows where we're going to land, Mr Chair, because there is so much that could be in this. As, again, as one of the other national speakers, and I can't remember who it was, uh, talked to, this could be the, um, what, 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 the, 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 the Richard Worth Memorial Bill, because this is, I think, the last speech he gave before he decided to go and... Before he decided... No, his parliamentary career is well and truly dead, Mr Foster Bell. Beware of Richard Worth. He provides a good example of what not to do. Even though he was an extremely good lawyer, it was a little bit of a waste of a talent for him to enter Parliament. As the, uh, he started out as the MP for Epsom and he ended up as the... Uh, is a list MP who had, who had to go and pursue other opportunities. Come on. But mind you, he did end up getting a PhD in this parliament. So it wasn't all wasted. Well, no, he got a PhD. Richard Worth got a well, PhD. Well, let's not debate Mr oh, Worth's sorry. legal career. Let's have a crack at this. <laughs> Causes one and two of this bill. <laughs> well, the whole 208 thing was only funny the first 15 times. So oh, crack on. <laughs> <laughs> well, it could be. Um, what else could what else could we call this bill? We could we could call this the um, uh, the Port Chalmers Bowling Club. Thank God, our lease has finally been ratified. Bill, they've been waiting since 1977 to have it done. I have, if there are any members of the original Port Chalmers Bowling Club still around, they'll be raising a glass of sherry when this bill is um, when this bill passes through the house. Would, well, that you never know. We're not going to. No, we're not going to increase tax on sherry, Mr. Foster Bell. But you never know. It could be the Nelson Marber District Health Board Land Act because they have been waiting for their three parcels of land that were endowed to them, that were gifted to them, that were put in reserve to have a gain come up. But I think the most important thing is we could call this the Auckland Art Gallery finally being. Um, 
finally being ratified, Bill, because the Auckland Art Gallery, before the development went ahead, was supposed to get this ratified, that any work they did in Albert Park was supposed to come through. It hasn't. The Auckland Art Gallery has been built, the ribbon's been, uh, been cut, and a number of exhibitions have gone through. I think they would be horrified if this bill didn't go through the House, only to find out, oh my goodness me, they have to cut off half the gallery. Um, or it could be that let's transfer, uh, let's transfer resource management uh, responses from the Governor-General to the Minister of Conservation Bill, and I'll leave it I at that. Call